all right, now pike I'm wide. <laughs> uh, well, it's steeped in the deepest history of photography, isn't it? Before we had color, we had black and white. Or did we? One of the things we will look at is how we print black and white images. Uh, not just as I alluded to in the summary of black and white printing that I sent through in the preparatory notes ahead of this workshop, not just the inks that we use and their mixing and so forth, but black and white, what is black and white? They're acrochromatic colors, not apo, not all apochromatic, acro, okay, but what is black and white? We'll look at just a few prints and books shortly, which give evidence to all manner of variations on this thing we call black and white. Now I'm not talking contrast. I'm still talking the color composition, the tinting, the toning. However, we might want to consider this from really obvious, can't miss it even with sunglasses on sepia toning, classic prints, of course, we're in the digital darkroom, we're not printing with metal any longer, beautiful silver. So there's no tarnishing, oh, no aging, no tarnishing going on as there is with silverware in the bureau at home or spoons in the drawer or beautiful silver gelatine prints. There's no tarnishing. There's no combining with especially sulfate, the sulfides in the air to produce a sepia toned print as so many old prints are that were never toned in the first place. But through the aging process, no, but it doesn't mean that we can't then replicate, simulate that look and feel of a traditional, even aging sepia tone print, let alone all of the subtleties in between. Really, there's been a color composition there all along. And of the three compositions that our images can be structurally divided into, and those who've done a digital a print workshop, digital print workshop, even a Capture One workshop, we had to go into some of this to answer some more questions, some more issues. The three structural elements that our images can be broken down into to account for how they are made. A little bit more about this shortly. The drawing composition, the lines going in different directions, crossing over, making shapes of different sizes, the line direction, shape sizes, the four tools inherent in the drawing composition. That doesn't change in a black and white image. Then the tonal composition, the drama in the image, the lightness and darkness, the hardness and softness, the contrast and the brightness. That doesn't change. That is the heart and soul of the black and white composition with the drawing composition. But then the color composition, it's so easy, as you will see when we're channel mixing and blending different degrees of red, green, and blue light together to do all sorts of magical things in skies, in faces, in, in, in rooms, and in dreams, and so forth. My goodness gracious me, at that point, you think we're getting rid of three channels and we're going to a single channel, but let's not be fooled because when we return the image to the world from which it came as a print in its own right, as an object in its own right, occupying time and space with agency almost, at least that's what, was, what we bestow on it. We care so much about these things at, at, at times. Then of course, there's still a couple color composition. It's just of a degree or maybe an order of magnitude more subtle, not necessarily, but it can be. So for me, color is still massively important, even when we're talking about black and white photography, just far more subtle, but in some ways, therefore even far more affecting, far more affecting of us and our thoughts and feelings about what it is that we're witnessing and engaging with. Now, hopefully that little introduction gets a little bit of the ontology of how we think about the essence of, of black and white and therefore this workshop. And not just the print, but the entire image process, post-capture. Um, uh, hopefully that's enough to just bed down some uh, fundamental points of departure for us. And now two things that we will need to know, two things we really need to know so we don't go off on wild goose chases and working with software that none of you are using, for example. So what software do you work with and what do you process your raw files with? And then what do you, 
those RGB processed uh, files with, is it, is it Lightroom, Photoshop, is it Capture One, Affinity Photo? I, it, it doesn't matter to us. It's just so that I can hit the right buttons and jump to those uh, particular applications as needed. And the other, of course, is uh, if you're printing. Now, we're not really going to be printing until tomorrow, but of course, a lot of today is also going to be processing those images and converting and va va vooming and staging and performing those images so that they are on a monitor in a fit and ready condition to go to a printer and extol other virtues, other outcomes from having printed them. If you are printing or you're outsourcing black and white printing or you're printing yourself, what, what is the printer and the ink set? An Epson P900, for, for example, with the you know, uh, OEM inks, the Ultrachrome Pro 10 ink set or Ultrachrome Pro in our 20,000s and so on. Uh, make sure we know that so that then I can really burrow down deep and concentrate on those elements that are already a substantial component of your flow.